Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's pretty exciting because today we are playing the Stanley Parable. As it says, you are playing the Stanley Parable, so I guess that means we are playing the Stanley Parable. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I haven't. What I've watched a tiny bit of the gameplay, just the first bit, just a tiny bit of it. It just looks so, so much fun. It's just like a. It's a really, sort of a. Uh, different game to all those other games. Like, it's so unique. It's probably the most unique game I've ever heard of. I guess. It sounds a lot like a lot of fun. The demo was cool. The demo was really cool. Um. But it just like. Pretended that they stuffed up. I mean, not that. That's just things like that's about being pretended. How they stuffed up the whole demonstration. I thought it was really, really cool. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm really excited to play. So, if you guys would like to play it, go on to Steam. Uh, it's only fifteen dollars, and. It looks like it's well worth it. It's got quite a good rating on things. This stuff. is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, Clever, every month, end. of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. What's say? Be my valentine. Oh, a bit of lag there. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. It's just... You, you never really see this in any video, guys. Like, it's just so much different to everything else. I hate Mondays. <sighs> Can't jump. When Stanley came to oh. a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Did he? Did he really? I I thought he entered the one on his right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Perhaps, maybe he did. Uh, that's that's probably why he why he went there. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, 
drinking it all in. Coffee that. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No, he didn't. You have to recall him doing that. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Because you do not lie. If you are lying <laughs> right now, stop. <laughs> what? Doesn't even make any sense. Swipe my card, swipe my card, swipe my card. <gasps> can't chair. No, I can't jump. It's a kind of chair. Woody, do not jump from the cargo lift while it's moving. <laughs> Will cause death. <laughs> Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift. Five thousand dollars. Well, that's great. Your your family can pay for your funeral expenses and that five thousand dollars for jumping off it. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Oh. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Oh yes, now I remember. Let's just see stuff around with him. It's pretty funny. Oh, he's clicking. He's clicking a keyboard. Oh, he's clicking a keyboard. But not actually clicking anything. Like it sounds like it's clicking a keyboard. I mean, oh man, it's really dark. Oh, that's her, Stanley. Oh my god, you need to be the one to do this to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick. Oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? Now that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. <laughs> no, that was possible. Let me double check. <laughs> no, oh. it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his you wife, and in? the two pledge themselves to one another. Oh, Music sorry. comes in. Fade to white. Roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Ah. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Okay. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? 
Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense, and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. <laughs> Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome oh. back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Okay. Well, how far back do we have to go? You go this way? Nope. This is one of the best games I've ever played, honestly. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine oh, that's the main how characters the dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. <laughs> we just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Far back we go. Oh, we're gonna go all the way back to where I chose the room, I reckon, because that was the wrong choice. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. You click that keyboard, Stanley. Oh, what? Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, two. he entered the door on his left. Left. Ah. Uh. Oh, no. No! Why did you do that? <laughs> Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Oh, my God. This is the coolest game I've ever played. I'm sorry, narrator. Oh, oh wow. Well. It's ruined. You, I can't believe, <laughs> after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage, it... Well, it's worthless now! And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy no. all of my work? I don't know. No. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have no, to. No, you don't do that, I man. I have to. You don't. Oh! Jeez. Don't shut the game down, boy. Still here, here in this pile of rubbish, with 
you. You, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. Sorry. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There I, was a whole I underground did. facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. What the hell? Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What the hell happened? This is... Yet there was not ah. a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up said. to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Not sure if he... We've been through all that stuff. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it has... I think it just cut out a bit of the dialogue because, um... When I watched PewDiePie's... Like, I watched just a bit of it. He went down. So... Yeah. Yeah, this is the one that he said looked like Mr. Burns' office. Oh, it's different. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. I am the most Shocked, boss. unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw <laughs> the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark. 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Night Shark 115, was it? Night Shark 115. Night, Night Shark 115. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark. Night Shark 115. Night Shark. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Night Shark. Night, Night Shark. Night Shark 115. Night Shark 1. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Night Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Night Shark 115. Night. Okay, fine, you're not gonna do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his What the hell? Oh my gosh. Stanley? Hello? This is absolutely crazy. Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything alright? Stanley, this is important. 
The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Oh. The choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Danny, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. The end is never the end. Well, if that is the end, that is the weirdest and shortest game I've ever played. That was a lot of fun though. And there are lots of... Oh, what's this? Ah, you start again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? There are just so Stanley many decided to go to the meeting room. Like Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It's sort of like a game where you have to go through and complete the whole thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching my first game. Um, that was pretty crazy. And <laughs> I'll make another one soon. Um, <laughs> yeah, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.